Welcome to Good Medicine with Summit Medical Group. I'm Marcella Palmer. All around the world, people are born with physical deformities. For some in developing nations, reconstructive surgery just isn't an option due to the lack of facilities, medical professionals, or resources. But there are doctors out there who are helping with their hearts and their hands, giving of their time and talent to help change lives. Summit Medical Group plastic surgeon Dr. Reza Momini, along with fellow plastic surgeons Drs. Scott Mosser and Bupesh Vasisht, are using their skills to help improve lives through Destination Hope International Medical Missions. Destination Hope was founded by Dr. Mosser uh, with participation with some of the plastic surgeons. And the idea behind the mission and the organization was that we want to be able to provide care in places around the world where care is not ordinarily available. The two main surgeries we do are the cleft lip and the cleft palate surgeries. Cleft lip is what's visible on the outside and cleft palate has to do with what's on the inside and, and mainly has to do with the ability to speak properly. When we're forming in the uterus as a fetus, the face forms itself by several pieces, some several structures that come together from the back. As they fuse in the center of the face in the front, we form our nose, we form our lip, we form our palate. That's the roof of your mouth. That's the hard roof of the mouth. If there's a problem in the way that these tissues come together in the fetus, then you could have a cleft. Being born with a deformity in a lot of developing nations is essentially a life sentence for a lot of kids. Depending on what the culture of the place is, depending on what the history of these deformities are, it's a source of shame to the family. It's, uh, it's, it's cause for that child not to be educated. Uh, a lot of times that child has essentially no chance ever of holding a job down. And the real problem with these children is that mentally they're absolutely normal. So it's, it's strictly and only a physical deformity of the face. And yet, because you look different, because you look like a freak, as they might uh, describe you, you have no chances of ever really interacting normally with the rest of the world. Probably the greatest challenge has been to try to duplicate what we do here in the U.S. in terms of our skill level, in terms of providing the standard of care that we have in the U.S., and take that to a remote part of the world. So we wanted to be able to do this not at the cost that it takes to do this in the U.S., which is probably close to maybe fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars up until you're done growing up, only in surgeons' fees, but at, at a number closer to two or three hundred dollars. And that's what we're able to do with this organization because everybody is volunteers, everybody donates their time, and essentially what we have to do is just get the local infrastructure in place so that we can operate and get enough supplies. One time in the Philippines, we had a really interesting problem. Three, four days into the mission, this is when all the schedules have been made up, all the operating room time has been committed. We had a young man show up. He was about 13 or 14 years old. So imagine not having your cleft repaired here as a two-month-old, like it usually happens in the Western countries, but going through 14 years of your life with a big facial deformity, with what makes you look very different than everybody else. And it was just heartbreaking to tell him that, you know, look, we had no operating room time left and we had no anesthesia material left to put him to sleep for this operation. And then finally it dawned on somebody on the mission that maybe you can offer to him to do this under local anesthesia. Now, I don't think any patients in the state would ever let you operate on them for this operation under local anesthesia, but we promised them we can get this numb enough, but you're going to see us and you're going to be interacting with us during this operation. And he was a go. He had no problem with it. He thought, you know, I've traveled three days to get here. I'm not going to let this stop me because the next mission may be another 14 years. So lo and behold, about an hour later, he was done, and I cannot really forget the event where one of the nurses in the operating room had a little pocket mirror in their purse and we gave the 14-year-old the, uh, the uh, pocket mirror and he looked at himself and the smile ear to ear on his face is just memorable. I will probably never forget that. We're really actually pushing to go into more and more rural areas of greater need for surgery, which means that we're, gonna, uh, we're going to engage in a fundraising drive to purchase the equipment that's necessary to perform work in a region that doesn't have a large tertiary hospital with all the equipment already there for us. So we're actually hoping to go to regions like rural Kenya uh, where they may have plumbing and they may have electricity but they really won't have any more for us to work with. These missions happen by the volunteers and by, by the good sense of the people that go on them but we always can use support. And the support can come in, in the sense of spreading the word. The support can come in a sense of just talking to your friends and neighbors about this problem. And obviously the support also comes from financial support to the organizations that do this. And besides Destination Hope, there are multiple excellent organizations that do this sort of work and do great work at it around the world. And if anybody's looking to help, it's very, very easy to look up one of these organizations and send, even if it's a dollar or five dollars. Remember, it only takes about 200 or 250 dollars to fix one child's cleft lip, change their life forever. It's not that bad for us. 
This has been Good Medicine with Summit Medical Group. Thanks for watching. Summit Medical Group is here to help you live well and stay well.